morning, everybody. Good morning. Have a seat, and we'll begin worship. <clears throat> I was glad when they said unto me, let us come into the house of the Lord to worship. We'd like to uh, welcome everyone here this morning and those online, and we have a Extra special guest, our district superintendent, Rick Owen, and his lovely wife. So we're glad to see you, Rick. Uh, and I'd like to tell you about our Ethan. He won an uh, Excellent Student Award from Hueytown Elementary. So let's give him a hand. There will not be an SPRC meeting tonight at 5. That, that is canceled. Be sure and mark your attendance pads in the pews so we'll have a record of attendance today. <clears throat> and don't forget our time change next Sunday, so turn your clocks back Saturday, or you may think you're coming to Sunday school and you'll be at worship. <laughs> spring forward. Huh? Spring forward. Yeah, spring forward. That's correct. The Hope Fellowship Support Group will meet next Sunday right after worship. And they're having Santa Fe soup. Uh, the United Methodist Women are collecting hygiene kits for UMCOR. And they're going to collect them this month, and the last Sunday will be on Easter, April 1st. Uh, the container, yeah, Easter, that's right, buddy. Um, the containers will be outside the church office. The Seekers group are collecting toys this month for the Christian shoe, shoe, Christmas shoebox ministry. And their container, they have a container also outside the church office. Remember to pray for all our sick and shut-ins. And are there any other announcements? If not, we will worship with our prelude and bringing in the light. <coughs>
Would you <clears throat> please stand and join me in our unison prayer this morning? <clears throat> oh God, creator of the universe, we come to worship you and join all creation in your grace. Revive us, enlighten us, and draw us to one more Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, you may not be seated. <laughs> Let's stand together and sing our first hymn, number 77, How Great Thou Art.
seated and I invite the children to come forward for children's time with Miss Lorraine. <coughs> Bag ladies with you again this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes. How are y'all doing today? Good. We have a lot of visitors. We have a visitor here. Hello. What's your name? What is it? Nice to meet you. And why don't everybody stand up and say hello to all of our visitors here? You know what we're going to talk about today? We're going to talk about love. How many of you have a lot of love in your life? Okay. <laughs> Liz, how would you describe the feeling you get when you love someone? Can you describe it? Elias, I'm going to ask you how. By kissing, By kissing <laughs> someone. That's good. That's good. How about you? That's good. That's a good. She said by showing the complete opposite of hate. That is wonderful. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome because I love dogs. I've had Miss Faye's dog this week. Oh. She's a Shih Tzu and she is a darling. I do too. I do too. But today, since it's kind of hard to explain love, we're going to talk about Paul. He wrote a lot in the Bible, and um, he made a long list of what love is and what love is not, and what it does and what it does not. I've given you a list in your bag with your candy. Today, we're going to talk about the first three. The first three is love is patient. Love is kind, and love does not envy. Envy means, okay, say, that's right, it's jealousy. Uh, say, that is true, that somebody else has, right? You guys, you guys don't feel envy very often, do you? I do. He feels envy about me. Does he? Well, you're his brother. He's supposed to. I got, I got Xbox. You got an Xbox. Yes, yeah, but he fights people too. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, we got Xbox Three Think you're losing. They have an Xbox. We have to get. One of them, one of them is being kind. What does kind mean? Love. You should be nice. That is true. What does kind mean to you? Do what? That's what what she said. I know that is, and you guys are all kind to each other, aren't you? Yeah, my sister's kind to me. Sherry. 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 Okay, now today. We've studied three of these things that Paul wrote about, wrote about and there's 15 in, in, your fo in your bag today. So read them next week and be ready to discuss them, okay? Okay. Okay. Let's pray, okay? Let's bow our heads and pray. Our Heavenly Father, surround these children with your love. Show them that daily you are there for each of them. We ask in your holy name. Amen. All right. Don't run. Walk.
One of the scripture readings for this morning is Psalm 19. Instead of my just reading that to you, I invite you to join me in reading it responsively. Would you stand as we read this together? The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims God's handiwork. Day and day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them God has set a tent for the sun, which comes forth like a bridegroom leaving his chamber and runs its course with joy like a strong man. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit is the end of them, and there is nothing hid from its feet. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous all the More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can understand one's own errors? Clear me from living thoughts. Also keep your servant from the insolent. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated.
Today's scripture reading comes from the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, from the 20th chapter, the first 17 verses. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or your female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord is giving to you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. And you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be to God. Well, you know, there was a really important basketball game on TV last night. And if you missed it, you missed seeing Duke beat Carolina, which in in my world is like your Alabama-Auburn game. (laughs) But during that game, Grayson Allen, who is the star only senior, plowed into... Uh, the camera person that was right under the basket. How many times have you seen that happen? A player running to catch the ball from going out of bounds. And in doing so, they, they get the ball back in, but they themselves are, are flung on top of somebody. It, it happens in football, too. People running so hard trying to, to make the play that they run out of bounds. Well, the boundary line in sports is there for a reason. It creates a safe space for the play to happen. And often when players go outside those boundaries, they're likely to inflict injury on themselves and others. We think of the Ten Commandments maybe as a boundary line, like that boundary line in sports. It keeps us safe. Keeping the commandments keeps us from inflicting injury on ourselves and others. I think, though, sometimes we might think about the Old Testament, the law, and these commandments as a burden, as something that maybe we're set free from through Christ. We might think of them as something that weighs us down, that's an obligation, a duty. But the psalm that we read, Psalm 19, reminds us that the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The psalmist is saying that the Torah, the law, the instruction of God, should revive us and rejoice us, cause us to rejoice. The law is not meant to be a burden. Rather, the Ten Commandments were given as part of God's covenant with Moses and the Israelites, part of that next covenant in the series that we've been talking about, one of those promises that God is making to God's people. In being bound in covenant with God, the people are set free to live as God's people. When we bind ourselves to God in covenant, we're set free to live as God's people. Now, that might sound like a paradox, binding ourselves in order to be free. But we might think of it in terms of other things. Um, How many times have you known someone who, once they got married, they put on a few pounds? (laughs) Sometimes it's because we're actually living with someone that's a good cook and we eat better. 
but sometimes it has to do with the fact that we've made this commitment to someone and we're not quite as worried about how other people see us anymore. We're not worried about getting a date or being marryable anymore. It's as if we um, have bound ourselves to someone and then we're kind of free in some ways. That's maybe not the perfect example. Maybe sports is a better example where there, there are rules that we're bound by. But think about it. There's only 100 yards in a football game. So if you're a kicker, you know you'll never be asked to kick more than 100 yards. Not that I've ever seen a field goal from 100 yards. Now they, they do punt and whatever. I don't remember what all those kicks are called. But anyway, <laughs> you're never asked to kick it more than 100 yards. You know what the rule is, so you can work within that to be your very best. Living the Ten Commandments, though, is more than following the rules. It's about following God. God made that covenant with Moses and the Israelites, and through that covenant, they were able to put God first before all others. When God made that covenant, God was binding God's self to the, Moses and the Israelites as their one true God. Their one true light might be another metaphor. Because there's an awful lot of artificial light in our world. I don't think anybody here is old enough to remember before electricity, but when you're out where there isn't electricity, you can see the stars a lot better. When you are not in a place where there's a lot of artificial light, you can see the real light that's in the sky, the stars. Is that how it is in our lives? Are we surrounded by so much artificial light that we can't see the one true light who is God? When the Ten Commandments were given to Moses, the culture recognized many gods, gods with a little g. There were lots of them. And the first commandment does not say, there are no other gods but me. Rather, God said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Our lives can be so filled with other gods that we don't see the one true God. Now, we not, might not worship Baal like the surrounding culture of the Israelites did, but we can turn other things into a God. We can worship other things we might place so much value on other things in our life that we worship those before God. I don't expect that many of you have graven images that you offer sacrifices to in your home, but we offer sacrifices to those little gods in other ways. We sacrifice time with our family by spending more time at work. There are other altars where we lay our loyalty that artificial light gets in the way of seeing the one true light who is God. When a scribe asked, was asked about the first commandment, the greatest commandment, in the 12th chapter of Mark, Jesus said that the, the commandments were, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your strength and with all your mind and with all your soul. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you think about it, the Ten Commandments are really summed up in those two commandments, those two ways of putting it, how we love God and how we love others. The first four commandments are about how we love God, and the other six are about how we love our neighbors. Love God and love your neighbors as yourself. But in sometimes, instead of loving our neighbors... We begin to judge them. Do they live up to the Ten Commandments? I don't know. As Christians, when it comes to the Ten Commandments, we are called to be witnesses, not lawyers or judges. When we take the Ten Commandments and we act like lawyers or judges, we're turning the Ten Commandments into something to be worshipped. But when we live out the Ten Commandments, we become a witness to the one true light 
who is God. Yesterday, our church council had a wonderful planning retreat where we talked about what we can do as a church, what our mission is. And in discussing that, one of the things that came out of our discussion was that we want to love our neighbors in a way that is real. We don't want to just give it lip service. We want our faith to be more than lip service. We have to truly live out our faith and not just talk about it. But you know, that little phrase, lip service, was actually that came out of something that we were talking about. It's an acronym. L-I-P, service. L is loving. I is inviting. P is praying. And then service is serving. Lip service. We're called to love our neighbors through loving, inviting, praying, and serving. Do you offer God more than lip service? Do you love others? Do you invite others into relationship with Christ? Do you pray for others? Do you serve others? Are you offering more than lip service to your faith? Are you living it out? In many ways, the Ten Commandments are about offering God more than lip service. Keeping the commandments is about living your faith in very real ways. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. The Ten Commandments give us a guide about how to do that. Psalm 19 praises the law. Another translation of it comes from the message. These are verses 7 and 8. The revelation of God is whole and pulls our lives together. The signposts of God are clear and point out the right road. The life maps of God are right, showing the way to joy. The Ten Commandments help us to witness to our faith in God, to give God more than lip service. When we follow the commandments, our lives are put into right order, and we allow God's love to flow through us into the broken world that surrounds us. We live in a world that is filled with artificial light, with the light that radiates from all kinds of screens, televisions, computers, phones, those artificial lights throw off our circadian rhythms. They lead our bodies astray into thinking that it's day when it's night or night when it's day. There are lots of other artificial lights in this world that lead us astray. But the Ten Commandments remind us that God is our God and we are called to be faithful. Love God and love your neighbor. The Ten Commandments help us to live out the love that we know from God and reflect that light back to those around us. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul and rejoicing the heart. Will you give it more than lip service? Will you live it? Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator of the universe, the heavens are telling of your glory, for you are the one true light of this world. Help us to see your light and love shining all around us when we are so often distracted by what is artificial in our world. Lord, we know that you have given the Ten Commandments to us as a way for us to live a full and happy life. Help us to see how they are not meant to be a burden, but to be boundaries that enable us to love you more fully and love our neighbors well. Teach us how to give your law more than lip service. Show us how to fully live into being your people here 
in this time, in this place, offering love, inviting people to faith, praying, and serving. Show us what it means to live out your grace and be your people. Lord, today we know there are many who suffer, who are in need of healing in body and mind and spirit. We especially pray for those whose names we know and who we love, for those who have encountered surgeries, for those who are anticipating procedures, for those who are hospitalized and at home, for all those who are suffering. We ask that they would know your healing touch. Lord, we lift before you those who grieve this day. For those who are missing a loved one, might they feel your comforting arms embracing them and giving them peace. Lord, you know the many concerns that we each carry in our hearts. Help us to lift those before you, to offer those things that you might be at work in our lives. And Lord, we ask that you would show us today how we might be an answer to someone else's prayer. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together every time I feel the Spirit. Please be seated, and I invite the ushers to come forward. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the many gifts that we know from your hand. We offer not now back our gifts, our tithes, ourselves for your service in this world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please remain standing for our last hymn, number 410, I Want a Principle Within. <laughs> May you go forth, giving your faith more than lip service, loving, inviting, praying, and serving. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.